Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I went from this to this in just a matter of seven weeks. And this was a project that I did primarily on my own. I did have a little bit of help for some of the heavier lifting parts of the job where a neighbour or a relative helped me to lift something for a very short amount of time, but most of the work was done on my own. And I did that in my spare time around my normal day job. So I definitely think that somebody with a reasonable amount of DIY knowledge could also achieve something similar, you know, with a bit of hard work and obviously a little bit of research as well. Many of these jobs that I hadn't done before, I watched some YouTube videos, I learned how to do it and just did it myself. Okay, so what I'm actually doing now is creating the formwork to pour the concrete base and that is the foundations for the room that I chose. It's not the only way to do it, there are other options such as ground screws or concrete pads. However, for me personally, I felt like this was the way that I wanted to do it. I felt like it would be the most simple and cost effective way to do it. However, it was a job that I've never done before. So like many parts of this project, I watched videos and learned how to do it by basically following other people who've already done it here on YouTube. So if I can do it, I think anybody else can do it. Now, this is one area where I did have a little bit of help from my brother. He came along for the day. We actually mixed the concrete from scratch we didn't have it delivered so my brother basically was around the front with a cement mixer just mixing the concrete up while I did the work around the back pouring it and floating it and tamping it into place but this part of the project was relatively simple it took one day to pour it and the day prior to that I was building the formwork and digging everything out so it was two days worth of work so once the base has gone off it was time to start on the floor. So I built a floor directly on top of the base. And the reason for this is I wanted to add a DPM to stop damp coming through. And I also wanted to add insulation to the floor so we didn't lose any heat through the floor of the garden room. So what you can see me doing now is just cutting the noggins and starting to add in all the insulation. Pretty straightforward really. Obviously if you want more detail on this part of the project that we do have a video on it. So you can go watch that on the channel but not terribly complicated really. It's just a case of cutting everything to size, fixing it together, putting the insulation in and adding the floor in. Next was the walls. So I did have a little bit of help with this from my brother again, who came along later in the day. But as you can see on that first part, the back wall that I did there, my brother wasn't there. I started earlier in the morning and he hadn't come around yet. And I actually got it up on my own. So in reality, I didn't actually need the help. It was just nice to have my brother there to give me a little hand. And it's kind of helpful when you're lifting these big OSB sheets to just have two of you there rather than struggling on my own. However, with that said, if he hadn't been able to come, I definitely would have been able to do this on my own. Now, the stud work and the timber work here is something that I do have experience with. I was a carpenter many, many years ago, around 15 years ago now. For around six years, I worked in that field. So I do have quite a bit of experience working with timber, building stud work. So I was quite confident doing this without any tuition online. But again, I've put a video out on this that explains exactly how I did it. So if you don't know how to do it, by all means, go watch that video and it's gonna to explain to you exactly how you can go about building the walls and also the roof that we're putting on now. And really, it's just a case of cutting the timbers to length and fixing them in place. If you can cut to length and fix in place, then you shouldn't have much of a problem doing this. It looks quite intimidating because it's quite a big project and it's the base of the shell of the building, but yeah, if you can figure that out, it's it's really not that difficult. So next we put the fascia and soffit on. Again, this was just on my own. And the EDPM rubber roof. These were both things that I have very little experience of. I've done a little bit of fascia and soffit. I've never fit this rubber roof in before, but I found it rather easy. It was a nice sunny day again, so I got to work out in the sun for a day. And basically I just followed a tutorial on the website where I actually bought the roofing from so every every part of this adding the trims very simple and then once that was done i moved on to adding the battens and as you can see there we've also put the doors in unfortunately i didn't film the doors but i did get a, a little bit of footage of me here just adding the glazing in putting the beads in on the on the glass units for the double doors And once that was done, it's moving inside. Now we're going to add some more insulation. So this build had insulation in the roof at 100 mil. And it also had insulation in the walls at 50 mil. And I also put 50 mil insulation in the floor before. 
So it's nice and warm. In fact, it's just a nice balanced temperature all year round. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just working around adding these on the bottom. And then I'm just going to put some noggins on top of the boards here. And then I'm just going to fill in the top as well. And the key here really is just cutting everything to size. Try and get your cuts nice and accurate. You know, the less gaps you have, the less chance there is for heat to escape. However, with that said, if there aren't any little gaps, you can go around with some expanding foam and just spray a little bit of foam into all the gaps. That'll seal everything up and you're going to have basically no leakage of the heat in the building there. No cold's going to be getting in. And I can say I've been using this room now for around a month and it's very nice and cozy. I mean, the weather's been quite nice, but when it's warm, it's a very, very balanced temperature. And then as the weather's started to get a little bit colder as we're moving into autumn, there is really no change in the temperature unless you leave the windows or doors open. The insulation just keeps a very, very balanced temperature in all weather conditions. Obviously, I've still yet to wait until winter when it's going to be really cold, but I'm quite confident that it's going to be nice and warm in here. Okay, so once the insulation's in, I added a vapor barrier. Again, another job that I've never done before, and many videos online were saying that you would need two people to do this. However, I did it entirely on my own. It was very simple. It took me a few hours, and I think I did a good job. I basically went around afterwards and sealed any joints up with, with tape, insulation tape, just to make sure that there was no leaks. And then once that was done, it was just a case of moving on to the plasterboard. So this was one time where I did have some help again. My brother-in-law just came down just to help me lift up onto the ceiling. Now, could I have done this on my own? Possibly. I could have used some props. I could have hired a board lift for the day. And that would help me do it. But again, my brother-in-law said, you know, if you need a lift, I'll come down. So I took him up on the offer. And that just made the job a lot easier. Now, once the ceiling was done, I was able to move onto the walls. So my brother-in-law was able to go home then and I just carried on on my own. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward really. We're just cutting the exact height on these boards and then just standing them up in place and putting the screws in. Very simple really. Obviously you have to cut around the sockets and the light switches and those kind of things, which you know does take a little bit of accuracy and you have to measure that correctly, but relatively simple. Okay, so the next job is dry lining. And again, this is a job that I have never ever done before. I watched a few videos on YouTube on how to install the tape into the joints and, you know, watched a few tutorials on how to best spread it and when you should sand it. And, you know, it, it was quite self-explanatory and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. The reason for this really was I didn't want to pay for a plasterer to come around and plaster the whole building. And I thought that I could get just as good a result by using this technique. And I think I was right as well, because once this was done, you really cannot tell whether the walls are plastered or not, I don't think. Okay, so as you can see, I'm doing the walls and the ceiling for this. I'm filling up all the screw holes as well. And this took two coats. So once this coat was on, I did have to add another coat afterwards. So it needed a little bit of sanding in between. And then it needed sanding afterwards as well. And what you can see me doing now is cutting out for the window. This really could have been done earlier when the door was installed. However, there was a delay on the window. It was going to be two weeks late. And because I had an electrician coming out, I had to just get on with the job. So I kind of marked out where the window was going to be. And when it arrived, as soon as it came, I fitted it, which was basically the same day that I'd started this dry lining. Okay, so once the dry lining was done, I got on with putting a mist coat on the walls, ready for two coats of paint. And this is the job that obviously everybody's done a little bit of painting before. I'm not a really big fan of it, but I didn't want to hire somebody to do a job that I could easily do myself. So I basically just gave this two coats. Made sure I cut in nicely in the corners, as you can see, with a nice little roller that I was using. And to be honest, I thought it looked a little bit patchy after two coats, but once it had dried, it really kind of sunk in and it didn't need another coat. You know, it actually looks really nice. The finish is really good. I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. And basically that's the inside done. So once we've done that, we can move on to the cladding. Now for this, I used a British Western Red Cedar. And this was opposed to the Canadian Red Cedar that is very popular with these type of garden rooms. The main reason for choosing this was just the price. The price to do this entire room in British Western Red Cedar was around one and a half thousand pound. 
Had I chose the Canadian Western Red Cedar, it would have been closer to three, three and a half thousand pounds. So it was basically just a, a, a case of budget. On this job, I really did want to do it on a budget. My kind of planned budget was around seven thousand pounds. And as you'll see at the end of the video, I came in very, very close to that. So the cladding is relatively simple. Basically, you just put the first piece on right up to the corner and then the next piece slots over with the tongue and groove and then you're just nailing through the tongues. So it's like a hidden nail. So once one board goes on, it's fixed through the tongue area and then the groove slots over the tongue, hiding the nail holes. So essentially, when you walk up to this, you can't see any fixings. However, they are fixed securely because the tongue is already fixed with nails and then when the groove slots into the tongue that holds the groove part of the board back and then you're fixing into the tongue on the other side so essentially the boards have strong fixings on either sides but they're just basically invisible uh, to anybody who's looking at the wood from the front it just looks like they've not been fixed with nails okay so this was just a case of going round repeating the same thing over and over again on the sides there were angled cuts because there was a sloped roof so you needed a little bit more time there to do that but the front and back were very simple every single timber was exactly the same length uh, for the cladding so it was just a case of cutting them i was cutting them in like three or four and then just fitting them all at once and there you go pretty simple job after that i did need to put the corners on but if you want to watch that you can obviously go watch the cladding video so here we are inside now, putting the flooring down. This is a rubber gym flooring. It's like a 20 mil rubber gym flooring. Very easy to install, just like friction fit. And obviously we do have a video. So if you want to watch that, you can go to the channel and watch it. And once that was installed, we put the skirting boards on. And again, this is a job that I am familiar with. I do have a little bit of experience in this area. So if it's something that you're not sure about, definitely go watch the video that I've done on the channel for that because I go into a little bit more detail on the scribes and the mitres. But once I was done and painted, I moved outside and it's just a case of finishing the exterior off now. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just sanding it up. It's been on for around two weeks, the cladding now. So it's had a good chance to weather and absorb a bit of moisture. And basically what I'm going to do is sand it off to take that kind of weathered outer edge off and then it's going to be ready to receive the oil. My friend also came out and helped me with this. So he was doing the other side while I did this side. And then we kind of met together on the back, which was very helpful because this would have taken me a lot longer had I been doing it on my own. But again, relatively simple. I just use an orbital sander. And yeah, just quite self-explanatory really. Following that, I went on to add the Osmos oil. This again is... A video that we have on the channel i went into a little bit more detail about this but essentially it's a uv protection oil that goes on the wood and it's going to stop it weathering and graying over time it's going to help it keep its color and as i understand it this lasts for between three and five years so it will need another coat a few years down the line however for now it's protected and it looks really nice uh, with this on it kind of gives it that wet look it brings the knots and the grain out of the wood it really kind of makes it stand out and you know just look a little bit more attractive so down the side there i've just done and now i'm round to the back and for this you have to leave it one day so i did it over two days it recommends to leave it for 24 hours before you have the second coat so i'm just adding this coat and then i luckily had another two days where the weather was nice and basically, I just carried on around in this fashion, just getting all the bits, all the little corner trims, all the little trims up around the bottom of the fascia and soffit. And just trying to get into all the little nooks and crannies, right into the grooves, the tongue and groove area, to make sure everything was covered. And there we go. I mean, I think that's a really nice angle as well. I think it looks really nice from that angle. And here it is from the front, finished. You can see that I've put a little board around it, which I think looks really nice. And for those who are interested in the pricing, you can see the price on screen now. This was the total price. If you want a more detailed breakdown of the price, go down into the description. There's going to be a link where you can find out exactly the materials that were used. And I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I really enjoyed making it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I will see you in the next video.